Hey guys, how are you all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to Star Wars Month. And of course, today I have another Star Wars movie review. Today we're tackling uh, not necessarily a part of the Skywalker Saga, the nine movie timeline, but kind of like the Clone Wars movie that we tackled and Rogue One. This movie is very essential and canon to the Star Wars timeline, with of course Solo, a Star Wars story, which is the latest uh, Star Wars movie to be released. Of course, The Rise of Skywalker is this year, uh, Solo is last year. Now, uh, I know this is not the first Disney Star Wars film that they actually made, however, this is the first one I'm reviewing. So if I refer to that as the first one, I'm talking about me, you know, re re reviewing it and seeing it first, because I am watching it, you know, the way you're supposed to, one through eight, and all the stuff in between, so that's what I mean. Anyway, so, let's get right into it with my list, with, of course, this is the, uh, the first film, uh, under Disney, and, uh, you know, and then I'm reviewing uh, that I'm seeing for this review thing, and, uh, it's great, you know, it, like, the, the prequels were good, you know, if you've seen them, one, two, I have a lot of issues with, but they're good movies, three, great movie, have a few problems with, Clone Wars, you know, watch it too, it's pretty good, uh, this one is the first movie that I've seen throughout, you know, going through my whole list of that is actually pretty much flawless, um, I really don't have any issues with this movie, um, now, I'm not to say that Disney, it, well, okay, in my opinion, the Disney Star Wars movies are the best made, and just the best, However, the prequels in the original trilogy are both very, very good, and I love them. However, like I said, those movies do have their flaws, which I'll get into when I do the original trilogy and all that stuff. But, uh, with Solo, like I said, this really is a great movie. Of course, this focuses on the prequel story of Han Solo, how he meets different characters and gets his name, and, you know, all these different things that really set up the future of the Skywalker saga in general. So, uh, very, very cool there. Uh, we have the directing. This is directed by Ron Howard, and uh, I really don't have any issues with how it's uh, shot and directed. Uh, there's, there's some really, especially during the action scenes, there are really, really good directing, especially with, like, you know, when Dryden Voss throws his blade or whatever, and when, uh, uh, what the hell, what's his name? Woody Harrelson's character, um, can you remember his name? When he's going around, like, the, um, you know, the train, like, the snow train, and he kind of does a like, quick shot around, it was in my Star Wars tribute, uh, really, really good stuff. And, of course, uh, like, like I said, there's really not a bad shot in this movie, and I still can't remember that guy's freaking name, um... Yeah, it's escaping me. I just, I knew it five seconds ago. When I got on camera, you know, of course I forget. But anyway, um, going on to the editing. Uh, the editing is great. Uh, of course, pretty much flawless. I say pretty much. There are two scenes that I, I don't really know if I'm, I'm not really going to call them negatives because it's really a personal preference. They're not actually bad, like universally bad. It's more or less just, okay, I would have done it differently, but it's still not, you know, terrible. Uh, so the two scenes I'm talking about, of course, uh, one of them is when uh, Han Solo and they get, you know, the gang, they get their uh, coaxium, right? And it kind of blows up, and it's a huge explosion. <clears throat> you know, this huge thing. And then it quick cuts, like, really fast to a, a scene where they're, you know, after, of course, Val dies. And, uh, what's his name? Damn it. I can't remember his name. Woody Harrelson. Who? I can't remember his name. Uh, of course, he punches Han in the face, uh, which, you know, isn't really ideal, but still, again, it was a really loud noise to, of course, just a really quiet scene, and I get it, I laughed, because I think it is supposed to be kind of funny, like, oh, that was a big explosion, and of course, you're not going to wait five minutes for the explosion to completely fade, but still, it's a very, very abrupt cut, and there's the exact same thing a little bit down the road in the, in the film as well, uh, not coaxium, but really, it is a, it, it's an explosion, and uh, it's just a loud noise, and then, boom, quiet, and to me, I wouldn't have edited it that way, again, that's not a negative, that's just me, you know, spitballing, and just, okay, I would have changed that, but... Again, not a bad thing. Uh, the writing. Of course, uh, the first Disney movie I'm reviewing has, again, flawless writing. I don't think there's a single line in this movie that was cringy uh, I, or cheesy or anything like that. I really do enjoy all the writing in this film. Um, you know, it, it helps progress the story, but it also... There are a few things where, like, Rio, the, the blue uh, alien, Adoran, whatever his name is, um, he, uh, or his species name is, uh, he definitely is Arminian, Ar Arni Arminia, Arminium, something like that. Um, he he, he kind of is there a lot to just kind of spitball facts. Oh, my knock roast, and uh, you know, not too warm, but warm, but like Tatooine, you know, all these different places. And if you call back on too many callbacks, like the Force Awakens does, and I'll talk about that when I do Force Awakens review. If you do that too many times, it can get really repetitive and boring and kind of cliche and corny because you're like, oh, we get it, you know, you're making a callback to this, like Jurassic World did, you know. Jurassic World's a great movie, but there's so many scenes in that where, oh, there's the helmet, there's that line, there's this, there's that. It gets to a point where it's like, all right, do some new stuff. We get it. You know, it's part of the same canon universe, whatever. Um, and this film, thankfully, it doesn't go overboard. Rio really does say a few things, and that's it. Uh, of course, when Han meets Chewbacca, he's like, oh, I'm not going to call you Chewbacca the whole friggin' time. I need something shorter. 
of course, chewy, you know, we got it. Um, you know, so they don't shove it down your throat, and I think they do a good job of it. But if they kept going, it would have been too much. But I think for this movie, they found the right balance of that. Uh, of course, wow, I just said that right now. Callbacks are good for me. Again, like I just said, they're, they're fine. There's nothing really too, uh, you know, huge and annoying about them. Um, Han meets Chewbacca, gets his name, and meets Lando Calrissian. So, uh, when Han meets Chewbacca, that is such a freaking good scene, man. I love it how you can you know, it's almost, they set it up like a Rancor type thing, and then Chewbacca comes out, and, you know, it's still freaking terrifying, because you don't know him at the same time, but they kind of formulate a plan to get out of there, and, you know, escape and all that, and it really is cool, and of course they become friends, they save each other's lives, and they bond, and of course they start to, uh, you know, the next time, after Solo, the first time, or the next time we see Han and Chewie at the same time, is uh, A New Hope, Episode 4, so it is pretty cool that, uh, you know, they do something like that. Maybe Chewbacca was in Rebels, I don't think he was, he could have been, I don't remember, I watched Rebels a really long time ago. I'm going to have to watch it again. But yeah, so it is pretty cool that he meets Chewbacca. And of course, he gets his name, Han Solo. Um, a lot of people don't like that scene. There's a lot of things people don't like about that scene. Um, I, don't, I don't know why. Uh, it, it makes perfect sense when you think about it. You know, Han Solo, he doesn't have people. Oh, what happened to his people? Who cares? There's so many things in Star Wars that we don't know that it really doesn't need to be explained. That's part of the mystery about Star Wars. Um, and one of them is, of course, like I said, who, who, who uh, you know, Han's parents are. And he's like, yeah, I don't have any people. And they got the Imperial Guard's like, uh, you're alone, you got no, uh, you're solo, you're Han Solo, you know, it makes perfect sense, it, it fit with the story, it was funny, it was clever, it worked, a lot of people were, Ugh, you know, they were hemming and hawing at it, I, I think that was just uncalled for, I think it worked, it's really cool, um, you know, of course, like I said, it, maybe they could have done it better, but I don't think that it was bad, I really enjoyed that scene, I don't know. Um, and it is kind of cool that, you know, the Imperial Empire gave Han Solo his name. So when you watch 4, 5, 6 and the rest of, you know, the Solo film, when Han is, you know, killing, shooting Empire Imperial Guards or throwing the helmets, he's like, oh, you want Solo? I'll give you Solo. He F's him up. You know, it really is cool. And it's a great little nod to the future whenever he's killing Empire. They give him the name and he's giving him back the name. You know, oh, now you're Solo or I'm Solo. Look at my friends. You know, it really is kind of cool that uh, they did it that way. Of course, he meets Lando Calrissian, played by Donald Glover. Glover, whatever. Uh, I really do enjoy his performance. I think he does a, uh, you know, the nice thing about this movie is that Alden, Alden Aaron Reich, Reich, whatever, he does a, he's a great Harrison Ford knockoff. He's a great Han Solo. And uh, a lot of people, you know, be Oscar like, oh, I'm not seeing this movie. Why? Because he's not Harrison Ford. It's like, well, he's not going to freaking de-age to be 20 or however, you know, 18, whatever, how old he is in this film. Um, I think Alden does a great job. Um, you know, he's not doing a, you know, right, princess, you know, Chewbacca. You know, he's not doing a, a Harrison Ford voice knockoff, he's doing his own voice, and it makes sense that he's not going to sound like Harrison Ford, because he's younger. Of course, the first time we see him, which is episode 4, New Hope, he's a lot older, uh, you know, more wiser and, you know, more grounded in this universe than he was in the solo film. So it makes a lot of sense for him to sound a little bit younger and different. Uh, but Donald Glover's just, Glover, whatever, he's the same exact thing. Lando Calrissian, he's a great character, he's funny. Uh, we're going to get to him in a few minutes, but I do think that him, his introduction into the Star Wars canon is really good and well handled in this film. Uh, of course, Kira and uh, her good, uh, how good of a character she is. Yeah, I do think Kira is one of the best Star Wars characters uh, in, in recent canon. Because um, you're always like, okay, she's, she's hot, she's nice, she's with Han, it's going to be great, right? She's a good character, it's fine. But then you're like, oh, wait, she's turning, and then she's with Dryden, and then she's not, and then she's doing this, and then she's with that, and then she's turning. And then she's finally turning with Crimson Dawn in the end. And uh, it's a great character, because the first time you see him, when, when Han and, you know, Kira meet in that, in Dryden Voss's ship or casino scene, whatever, uh, Han sees her and he's like, whoa, it's Kira. And then Kira looks more eloquent, you know, and she has like the, the braiding thing on her, on her hand, you know, this area, her wrist or whatever. Um, it is really cool to, you know, see that you look at this character and you're like, all right, she's good. And then you're like, oh wait, she's evil. And then she's good. So I think her character is really cool because kind of, you're always guessing what's going to happen next, of course, um, because people didn't see it. Uh, I don't think there's going to be another solo movie, but let's see, who knows. Uh, but yeah, I think her character was really well handled, and she's a, she's a good character. I like her. Um, Darth Maul from Rebels. This is the huge thing. Everyone either hated the scene, I don't know why, or completely loved the scene like me, and hopefully like you guys. I don't know, it is what it is, whatever. But I do think that Darth Maul, this is the first time, I believe, that we've actually seen a character from the animated series, which is canon, make it into the live action series. And it was freaking awesome. I remember, like, peeing my pants and going nuts. And I mean, actually, I didn't pee my pants. But you know what I mean. In the theater, it was crazy. Because, you know, you see Darth Maul and his robotic legs. Uh, and then you're like, oh, wait, is that? And then you hear his voice. And it's from Clone Wars and Rebels. 
uh, the guy who plays Starkiller in my Force Unleashed gameplay, which if you have not seen that, check it out. It's pretty cool, a lot of fun, uh, but it's the same guy. Starkiller's voice is Darth Maul's voice, and it is really cool to see him talk. Of course, he'll ignite his lightsaber. Everyone was like, oh, why is he igniting his lightsaber? That's, that's cheap and lame. Look, the problem with Star Wars fans is that these fans have to freaking ask questions at every millisecond. It's like, can't some things just be because it's a freaking movie? And the reason why Darth Maul likes his lightsaber is to intimidate Kira. There, there's your answer. Go home. But still, I really do think that this, this scene with Darth Maul is really well handled. It's fun. It's really intense that, you know, she's working with him and he's working with her. And it's, it's, it's really, it raises a lot more questions than it really should. Uh, especially because we're probably not going to be getting another solo film. So we don't know. And of course, Darth Maul is not dead. Uh, he died in the Rebels show. So it's like, how do we, you know, how do we, you know, go forward with this? Uh, but of course, we'll never, you know, see how that goes because, of course... Stuff happens with uh, the movie, but still, is what it is. I thought it was really cool, and of course, uh, the, like I said, the first time seeing Darth Maul from animated to live action, it looks great, CGI is great, or whatever it was, person. It is not Ray Park, who was in The Phantom Menace. Still, though, it is really cool, and uh, it's nice to see that character in live action. Uh, Lando Bang... <laughs> I wrote this here. Lando Bangs Robots, and uh, he does. I was going to say the F word, but, you know, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, Lando bangs robots. He screws robots. He has relationships, intimate ones, with droids. Uh, now this a lot of people had issues with. I don't really have an issue with it, but I don't really like it either. It's just kind of in limbo. It's like, alright, wh why? You know what I mean? I get why Lando now likes just girls, because his love of his life, L3, died. And now, of course, she's part of the Millennium Falcon, uh, the Navi computer and all that. But I think it's interesting, you know, that Lando is kind of a... He, He's like a ladies' man, but he sometimes dresses like a lady, and then he just not, you know, like, straight lady, but you know, you know what I mean. He has, like, these, you know, robes on and all that, and then you get Han, who's like, you know, this, this straightforward jacket, you know, gunslinging type guy. So he is kind of eloquent in the way he dresses, and of course, he gets the girls, and he apparently gets the girl droids. Uh, but I do like L3 as a character, and we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, I think Lando having an affair with robots is, droids, excuse me, is kind of strange. Uh, like I said, a lot of people have issues with it. I don't, like I said, I don't hate it, but... It, it, it is kind of weird, um, and every time L3 dies, it, you know, the acting with Donald Glover isn't, you know, it's not amazing, but, you know, it is good. You can feel that Lando really liked this ro the droid, and when the droid dies, you're like, oh, you know, I feel kind of bad. But, of course, it's in the Falcon, so it's all good. But, I do think that it is kind of strange. Um, not a negative for this review at all, but, you know, personally, it is kind of weird, but now I see why he liked Leia in Empire, and, you know, all this stuff, too. We'll have to see if he still, or no, Leia's, well... Carrie Fisher passed away, but Leia is still in this film, so maybe Lando will hit on Leia before she dies or goes off. I don't know what the heck's happening with Leia in this film, but it is kind of cool to see, like I said, Lando kind of go from droid to girl. It's kind of cool. It's weird, but, you know, what, whatever. Who cares? Um, L3, and of course the, uh, the commentary on L3. A lot of people had issues with her. Uh, I think she's a really funny character. She's, you know, got those girl hips where she's kind of walking like this, you know, she's got that sass and... Uh, I don't want to say sexy, but, you know, she's got that girl walk, you know what I mean? And, of course, with uh, with all this being said, L3, a lot of people had issues like, Oh, she wants equal rights for droids, SJW droids! You know, all these morons are going crazy, you know, and all the left-wing people are like, Oh, movie sucks! And, uh, you know, I just, I look at movies for what they are. Movies, I don't have political agendas on films or feminists, any of that crap. I think men and women are equal. It's all, it's all just garbage. Uh, this movie is just a movie. Um, and I think L3 wanting equal rights is funny, uh, but a lot of people need to realize that that was a joke, uh, especially the way Lando, you know, re replies to her. Um, L3 very much is a droid that wants droids to not be, you know, beat up or slaved or, you know, dismantled for parts or put under restraining bolts. She wants droids to be like humans and just be able to be free. And, uh, it is interesting to see that because we never really see droids with, like, actual con consciences. It's just like, oh, beep, bop, boop. Or, you know, c 3 oh my goodness, you know, I'm going to open the door. That kind of thing. That's really all it is. But now that we have L3, it really is cool to see that there's a droid out there uh, that wants to free other droids. Kind of like Chewbacca wants to free his Wookiees. It's the same thing. It's not. It's no different than that. L3, freedom for droids. Chewbacca, freedom for Wookiees. It's the same exact idea. Um, and I think it is kind of cool. Her, like I said, being kind of equal right thing, it, it, that was just a joke. I think people went too far with that. Oh, it's going to... It's just a joke. Calm down. She is a good character. I think she's funny. And of course, when she dies, it really does suck. But again, she's part of the Falcon now, so there you go. Uh, the story flow. This movie has a pretty good story, I think. There are, maybe the action scene in the beginning is a little bit too... Not the very beginning, but you know, the, the, the snow train heist with Val and... I still can't remember that guy's 
freaking name. Um, he, of course, you know, helps him out. But I think that that maybe was a little too soon. Uh, it's 100... What is this? 100, 100, 135 minutes. So just shy of 140, which was the same length as episode 3. However, going forward, I do think, because it's a longer movie, of course, not huge, it's not like Endgame or anything, but it is a long film, and I do think that, uh, you know, maybe... I'm glad there were enough scenes in it, it's hard to explain, but there were enough scenes in it that were action-packed. Maybe that snow one could have come in a little bit earlier or later, whatever, but I do think the overall story pacing is very well told. Um, it goes throughout, it isn't just action, action, action. You're just talking, talking, talking. It gives enough exploration... Uh, of the characters as well as, you know, explanation of the characters to essentially put the story forward but also have enough action where you're being entertained and you're not like, okay, there's too much talking, you know, so I do think the flow of the story is really well told. Uh, Dryden Voss, of course, played by Paul Bettany, who is Vision in the MCU. He's great. He's a great villain. Whenever he gets pissed off, his scars on his face and his eyes glow red. I don't know. I think he's an alien because I don't think humans do that. Um, and I know it's a Star Wars franchise. You can't really think scientifically about it, but still... Um, I do think Dryden Voss is not a human. I don't know what... If you know what Dryden Voss' species really is, please tell me in the comments. Uh, but I, like I said, he gets really bad and his freaking face glows like Rudolph's nose. That rhymed. But anyway, going forward, I think Dryden Voss is a good villain. We've never really seen a villain to this standard in Star Wars. You know, like Emperor Palpatine is this big guy. You know, big megalomaniac guy. Snoke, same thing. Darth Vader, same thing. All the Sith are kind of higher. But then you get Dryden Voss, who's just a crime lord who uses blades to stab enemies. No blasters, you know, no lightsabers, no dark sabers, nothing like that. It really is a different villain, like Kira, very different characters, and I really do like that. He's a good villain. Or should I say was. Uh, of course, we have the sound. Again, I covered this. The sound sounds great. Uh, the explosions are nice. The, the song, whenever Emphis Nest goes in the scene and you hear that, like, ah, yeah, you know, that weird song, uh, I really do think that's really cool. Um, you know, kind of like, if you've seen The Winter Soldier, whenever Bucky, The Winter Soldier, would show up, they play a certain sound, or like Wonder Woman, same thing. Um, or the new Black Widow trailer, same type of thing maybe, I don't know, let's see, I do like the music in that, but going forward, I really do think that whenever Emphis Nest shows up, the music is cool, of course the music is all around amazing, uh, and again, it, it all sounds great. Uh, oh, look at that, Emphis Nest, there we go. Uh, so she is a good character, of course, they pulled the old switcheroo again, like, oh, she's a girl, <laughs> who knew, you know, it makes sense, it is, it isn't cliche, but I kind of expected it because of the robotic voice. But anyway, going forward, um, we find out that she's fighting them for the Coaxium. And she's a bad guy. And then she turns out to be a good guy. And all of her buddies are just people that Dryden Voss and the, the crime syndicate kind of screwed over. Uh, Crimson Dawn screwed over. And uh, they're just really were trying to help. You know, it's kind of like a misunderstanding. Because uh, I was watching yesterday and I'm like, well, why the hell is she fighting him? You know, why, why is she beating up, you know, Han and... Woody Harrelson's character, I can't remember. Uh, but still, it is pretty cool that, you know, she is fighting and then she turns out to be a good guy, so it is kind of cool that, they, you know, they help for that. Uh, she's a good character, I really did like her, you know. They, again, they don't do a whole lot of switcheroos in Star Wars with the characters, it's pretty cool. Uh, Crimson Dawn, of course, Darth Maul, Kira, uh, you know, Dryden Voss are all part of this thing. We don't really know what Crimson Dawn is in the film, it probably got expanded somewhere, I just, I'm just not remembering, probably in one of the shows. Uh, but we never really get to see where this film leaves off with Kira in, you know, Kind of like Kylo Ren in The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, very confronted and conflicted within himself or herself, and we're talking about Kira. Uh, Darth Maul's, you know, really, you know, hey, I'm going to deal with you later type thing, you know. And uh, it really is cool to see that, you know, she, she is conflicted, but the movie ends on such a freaking cliffhanger, man. Of course, Woody Harrelson's character is dead. Darn it, I still can't remember the name. Um, but it is really cool to see that at the end. Of course, like I said, why no sequel? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think this, I don't really check critic reviews. I, I never do. I don't really care. Uh, I think this got a good review, though. I can't imagine it getting a bad review. Um, and, of course, you know, it didn't make a whole lot of money, probably because people are either pissed about Disney Star Wars, which you shouldn't be, pissed about something else, which you shouldn't be, and just mad in general that, you know, we're going back instead of forward. But, you know, the MCU is doing this on Disney+, Plus, and they've done it before, and uh, I do think that this is a good idea. You know, having Rogue One and Solo fleshing out the Star Wars. They're going to do the Kenobi film, but now, of course, it's a TV show on uh, Disney+. Plus. It still will be pretty cool, I think. So, again, I don't know why this didn't get a sequel. They might do one. Who knows? It's not like, you know, they're never going to do one, but it isn't in the books right now. Uh, of course, The Rise of Skywalker is on everyone's mind right now. For good or bad, for me, it's all good. But we'll have to see what happens with that uh, in the future with the sequel. The action scenes going with them. They are filmed amazingly, like I said. Uh, tons of tons of great stuff here with the, the end fight, the beginning fight, the, the Corellian car chase in the beginning with the Corellian hounds. It's all really, really good stuff. And, again, it's all shot 
amazingly well. Amazingly well? I'm going to say that. Amazingly well. Uh, the comedy. A lot of people have a problem with the Disney Star Wars movies for being too comedic. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Star Wars has always been funny. The prequels, in terms of comedy, are kind of a dud spud. They're kind of, they're not funny at all. You know, Jar Jar Binks tries to be funny. He, I think Jar Jar Binks is funny as a 21-year-old to think he's funny. Maybe I'm just stupid, I don't know. I think Jar Jar Binks is a great character. But, you know, the prequels as a whole are very not funny. You know, there's a few scenes where Andrew, Obi-Wan's like, hey, not good. I hate it when he does that. Or, you know, anything that Anakin, Obi-Wan says. But still, the, the original trilogy had funny moments, and that's what made it light. Uh, you know, not really kid-friendly, but just, you know, funny at times. You know, it wasn't a comedy, but still. Force Awakens had a lot of comedy. Last Jedi had a lot of comedy. Solo, Rogue One. Uh, and I do think that they all helped. A lot of people say, oh, Last Jedi sucks because the comedy killed the film. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, all the other movies were funny, too. Uh, you don't have to like the humor. You know, humor is subjective. Um, but still, uh, I, I, I do think it works. And Solo is perfect. This one is really funny at times. And it's not trying to be a comedy, but they, they, they have enough comedic beats where it is funny at times, you know, so that's that. And, of course, the Kessel Run, doing the Kessel Run in 12 parts, if you round down. Um, it is really cool. That scene was freaking great, man. I mean, it went from, like, one action scene to a chase scene to another chase scene. It was amazing, man. I love that scene. And uh, to be able to see the Kessel Run was really, really awesome. And going to the Kessel Planet is pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was it was a great movie. So, I'm going to give, uh, like I said, there really aren't any negatives about this movie that I can see. Uh, acting is great. The action scenes are great. The writing, directing, editing, except for those two little scenes, but I'm not going to count that because that's just me personally. It's not actually bad. Um, I'm going to give Solo a Star Wars story an A+. Um, I really, really love this movie. Again, uh, when I give something an A+, I'm not saying that it's my favorite movie ever, but I am saying as I look at the film suge you know, subjectively as a film, uh, I don't see any flaws with it. If you do, that's fine. To me, I'm going to give Solo an A+. I really enjoyed it. Please tell me what you thought about Solo, A Star Wars Story, in the comments. And please tell me as well if you want to see a sequel one day or if you didn't even bother seeing it. Thank you guys. May the Force be with you. And we'll see you guys in the next video.